Hey everyone, welcome back to Sketch Diaries. So today we are drawing bee drill, and I am excited because I really enjoy how this ended up coming out, so I hope you all enjoy it as well. And after this, I'm going to be recording another Art Walk episode, and that will be Ori in the Blind Forest. For those of you asking whether I'm planning on doing the whole game, that is correct. I am planning on playing the entire thing, walking through all of it, and commenting on the art, character designs, anything else that might catch my attention. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to catch it once it's uploaded or watch the first episode. Um, I do want to say that I'm probably... I'm going to attempt to make longer episodes of those because I realize that if I'm only doing it once a week and the game itself is a few hours long, it's it's actually a very short game, but I'm only playing around 20 minutes at a time, it's going to take a while to get through everything. I had a thought, I'm going to do what I can to sort of record in smaller chunks so that Camtasia can handle uh, having all the video together and um, what I will do is then edit together maybe an hour's worth of gameplay and then comment on it and then hopefully that will do well with um, us kind of getting through the game a lot faster and uh, it might actually go faster if I end up getting better at the game so maybe I will go ahead and just cut out some of the gameplay parts and focus on commenting on the cinematic stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, so if you're interested, feel free to watch those videos. I'm going to record the next one after this sketch diary. With all of that said, I just want to do thank you guys for everything. Uh, I was very curious and went back and listened to the very first sketch diary this morning and oh man, there is a huge improvement in just how confident I feel, how confident I sound. If if you all want to sort of listen for that yourself, like just watch some of the earlier ones compared to the tone of my voice in the newer ones. And it is absolutely insane. Like I can already tell. And maybe I'm exaggerating, but I feel that I can already see and feel a huge difference in being more expressive, uh, I, I feel a lot better. I did want to comment on that. Um, when I made the first video, I was very depressed, and I was seeing sketch diaries as a way to sort of therapeutically um, create an outlet for anything that I wanted to talk about and kind of create a very simple project for me to complete so that if I ever was down, I could look back and say, well, I've completed all of this, look at everything that I've done, look at how far I've come, and I just wanted to comment and say, this has already been helping. And I'm so happy to hear your guys' messages and to read them. You are all so supportive, and it really makes me feel so happy to hear that a lot of you are enjoying this and sympathizing with some of these diaries. That was a little bit of a long intro, but I did sort of want to um, change up the topic a little bit from moving away from college and art stuff because uh, I do want to point out that although art can be an amazing outlet, it can be fantastic, and um, practicing is important, it's also just as important to take breaks from the subject of art. I'm going to sort of deviate from in this episode. And so I wanted to talk about something that is totally not, I mean, you can apply anything to art, but something that is not directly related to art. And it's something that I have become more interested in, uh, not a lot lately, but when I first sort of was attempting to uh, create more distance between my self-esteem being connected to my art so much and trying to create more of a felt like my self-esteem was more dependent on myself instead of how much praise I was receiving for anything art related. And that is uh, Myers-Briggs personality stuff. 
And if any of you are familiar with that, it's essentially four letters that sort of represent a personality type for a person. And what that does is um, it describes how a person might think, might react to something. It's sort of a, it's, I think it's more experimental psychology right now. I, I think a lot of it is accepted as, not necessarily that it's true because it, it's like psychology, everything is theory, but like just kind of accepted as an, a good way of thinking about things. Uh, but I thought that this was a really interesting topic and I find myself kind of coming back to it because psychology is really interesting to me. And I often see myself uh, typing characters in movies and video games and uh, usually me and a friend of mine both end up typing like every character ever. That is where I'm coming from with this. So a little description of the personality type letters. So for the first set of letters you can either be, and this is very simplified, just letting you know this is super simplified don't take any of this as this is how you have to act that's very important I've seen people online that have kind of become their quote-unquote type and to me that's a super unhealthy way of looking at it I see it as more of something to do kind of for fun yeah so take everything with a grain of salt try not to like go too deep into it but anyway so for the first set of letters it usually is related to if you are introverted or extroverted and so the first letter of your type will be either an I or an E and um, that has a lot to do with if you gain energy from being around people which is the E or if you gain energy from being alone which is the I and um, that usually also relates to other things like if you would rather be the center of attention as opposed to um, kind of standing to the side of the room not trying to be in the spotlight and the um, a good thing to note is that this is all very broad this is all very um, these are all very specific scenarios where um, you can't overly apply it to everything you, again it's good to take this all with a grain of salt um, so and then the second one is probably one of the harder things to kind of uh, talk about and that is intuitive versus sensing which means um, if you are intuitive your second letter will be an N and if you are sensing your second letter will be an S and what that means is if you are intuitive you tend to gain information from um, sort of inside you you realize patterns more you you notice abstract ideas and don't have a hard time understanding them. Uh, books are very valuable to you. You um, and this again, this is all stereotypes. Uh, and um, sort of, yeah, intuitive is more idea people per se. A uh, sensing has to do with you. You're in it more for the experience of things. Um, you tend to take information more in through your five senses. You um, are very concrete about things. Um, you might have a harder time uh, understanding sort of the broader ideas and philosophies, but you're also much stronger than intuitives at noticing smaller details in things and being able to memorize them. So, um, yeah, the those those letters tend to be the toughest to kind of distinguish because I have noticed that um, a lot of descriptions of the personality types don't describe the sensing types in a way that's very overly rounded compared to the intuitive and um, it, it's tough because I don't really have the answer to that I'm not saying that you know I understand what the descriptions would have been but it, it does feel that there's always much less said about the sensing side than the intuitive side and I don't overly agree with that I think that we should definitely look into everything um, but uh, anyway so moving on uh, the third set of letters is um, F and T 
which is feeling, which um, usually has to do with you make decisions with your emotional um, with your emotional state and such, uh, as opposed to T, which is you make decisions based on logic and reason. And again, this is a little bit tougher because I think that a better description would be um, if you are feeling you you usually end up um, being more aware of the social situation around you. You you're aware of how this one person on the other side of the room is going to take something and so you're making decisions based on um, whether you want to keep everyone harmonizing or you want you just don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or you don't want to step on anyone in um, in a conversation uh, if it is T it is very strictly um, is very strictly logical. It's very much like this means this, therefore this. Uh, I, I feel like that probably leads the least amount of descriptions. It's think of every um, sort of stereotypically smart movie character that is essentially what what T is supposed to kind of be about and um, about logic versus feeling and. Uh, so going on to the fourth one, um, that is P versus J, and um, which is perceiving versus judging, and this has to do with how you kind of approach the world around you. Um, if you are perceiving, you tend to improvise a lot more. You um, don't overly plan things. You usually take things as they come and when changes happen you welcome them more so than those under the J description. Um, on the other hand, if you are judging, which is J, you tend to enjoy planning things out a lot more. You feel more comfortable when things are more orderly and in their place. Um, and uh, it can be harder for you to adapt to change, but it also is much easier for you to sort of get a single task done or keep to a plan because um, that has to do with that is a strength that J's tend to have a lot more in their descriptions um, but so with all those those very hastily described things together uh, that any combination of those things can kind of result in a personality type and there are 16 altogether, um, and then there are like even more descriptions from that. Like, I don't, I don't even remember what some of them are. I know that there's like the idealists, the rationals, the arc. There's, there's a lot. I, I don't overly remember what those broader things are. Um, but I thought it would be kind of fun if uh, people knew what their personality types were and um, if you do know to sort of comment and leave that in there because um, I can link to the test in the description if you would like to take the test because um, there is a free one there's also a paid one which I've heard is a lot more expensive and you can actually have someone tell you your type but I don't I don't really think that you overly need that but um yeah, and again, take all this with a grain of salt. This is just a fun thing to do. It's not meant to sort of categorize you in any way. Um, but, so, with that, um, I've taken the test a few times, and I remember really getting into it the first time I took it, and that was in high school. And um, when I took it in high school, and I've always found this very interesting because I've seen a few theories about types and how when you're a teenager generally your type is not fully developed so um, you'll be a lot more extreme with things but um, and also that there are sort of stages to types where there's there's like a stage one where you're kind of learning learning um, what decisions you're choosing and kind of figuring out what's comfortable for you and then there's the second stage where um, 
you're really blossoming as your type. You're really, you know, it, it's everything that would stereotype that would stereotypically go your way is going your way. And then the third one is becoming balanced, which would be um, the whole point of the type stuff is that it's actually healthiest to be in the middle of every letter. Because even though it might sound like a superhero to kind of give each type their own um, powers and such, um, I have heard that sort of the healthiest thing to go for is just being at somewhere in the middle for each one. And that's what that's what I feel most people are. And um, that's something that is good because then you see both sides of of a different coin. Like you're you're seeing you you have a more balanced life because you know no one no one letter kind of knows everything about everything you need a little bit of you will always kind of need a little bit of everything else um so that was way jumbled uh but i i hope you all sort of understood that i know that that wasn't the greatest description in the world but um if you are interested, uh, Google has like a million descriptions about Myers-Briggs personality stuff. And so I thought it would be kind of fun if if you know yours or if you would be willing to sort of take the test and then to comment because I'm always really curious. I, I feel that on Tumblr, for those who share their type, I see a lot of INFPs, INTPs, INTJs, and INFJs. Um, a lot of introverts. And um, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, so, to kind of tell you, I've taken this test three separate times, and the first time I took it in high school, and I scored as an INFJ. And that was when I was kind of a lot cleaner with my things because my mom kind of um, was very good about making sure everything was clean so that was something I ended up being a lot more organized um, I took it again later when I first got hired at Disney and um, I scored INTP and that was every, every letter was super extreme with that like I was I wasn't in the middle for anything. And, um, and then, again, recently I took it, and I feel, I mean, obviously the most recent one would be the most accurate with just it being the most, you know, the most recent, but also because I have been working a lot on um, kind of fixing a lot of my working too much issues, a lot of my art self-esteem issues, and I feel more well-rounded and better about things so I um out of curiosity I took the test again and scored INFP so um yeah I I just thought that was interesting you know again don't don't categorize yourself um I I take this stuff because I I'm really interested in psychology and I think it's really fun to think about stuff in the same way as like the Hogwarts houses are really fun to think about stuff. Um, oh, speaking of Hogwarts houses, if you are interested in knowing, I am a Hufflepuff. So, I'm just gonna say, I'm really bummed out that there are no, there's hardly ever any Hufflepuff merchandise in any of the stores. It makes me sad. But, um, yeah, so, again, take everything with a grain of salt, but I thought that might be fun if people might be willing to kind of um, type your personality in the description if you know it because I am very curious but um yeah thank you so much for watching uh, I don't really do any videos over the weekend I, but um, on Monday I definitely will even though it's a holiday weekend I believe this weekend that I'm just going to end up creating a backup of videos so that if I do end up having a night where I can't work on something that um, I can go ahead and upload a cued video that I've already recorded. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put everything together now and then do the art walk later. And um, yeah, keep an eye out if you're interested.